Land of the Radio with your host, Gen T. Yeah, fuck it. Jen is a warlord. Uh, what's up, everybody? Welcome to Rambo for Radio. I am your host, Gen T. In the fucking dark. <laughs> That's right. I have no fucking power because I live in a shithole town. Twitter and Instagram at GenT523. What's going on, motherfuckers? Yeah. Oh, this is lovely. So I'm just going to podcast in the fucking dark with my frozen pineapples uh, until my computer dies because I have no way of charging my computer. Because I have no power, because I live in a shithole town. Good old Shits Bernardino, California. <laughs> Can you fucking believe this shit? I cannot believe this shit. Ugh, this is ridiculous. So we're just gonna, I'm just gonna keep this uh, podcast going until my computer dies. <laughs> oh, let me get some lucky charms here. <laughs> Ah. <laughs> it's time for customers of the week. This week, I had to help Weed Granny. Oh my God, Weed Granny! She just, <laughs> she's a trip. God bless her little heart, but... Baby? Baby? Hello? Excuse me? Excuse me? Well, baby, I've been calling you. It's me, Weed Granny. I'm a little busy helping customers with timed appointments that they paid for. How can I help you waste my time? (laughs) I gotta tell you something. I can't feel my face. I think I took a little too much weed today. Oh, okay, weed granny. Well, um, is there anything that you need? Because I, I have to kind of get to these appointments here. Well, baby, I've been honking at you in my wheelchair. Beep, 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 beep. Okay. I, I fell down. I fell down and I sprained my ankle. What do you think is going to help me get better? Uh, probably a trip to the doctor. Doctor? Oh, doctors don't know anything. I was like, oh my God. Oh my God. Yes, doctors know some things. They don't know everything, but they know some things, okay? You should probably go see that. And she showed, she's like, look, baby, look at my leg. It's so swollen. I looked at her leg. I was like, oh, Jesus Christ, nutty professor, you better get the fuck out of here. <laughs> oh my God. It was fucking purple. Her whole fucking leg was purple. Jesus Christ. <laughs> you need to go to a doctor. Oh, oh, I'll go to a doctor. You know, I just smoke a little weed and I'll be fine. Here for me to use. I was like, Mm, not really, to be honest with you. I mean, we've got some pain creams, but you should probably go get that checked out. Make sure nothing's broken. Just saying. Oh, I don't know. But anyway, baby, I guess I'll get to moving on. I was like, okay, well, if you want to head to the aisle, you know, number two, that's where the pain creams are at. Okay. And then she straight up pulls the Austin Powers... <laughs> 10 point turn in the automatic wheelchair. There's two people on the aisle, uh, myself and one other customer, and she had room to pass. But she said, Baby, I can't drive this thing. Beep, 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 beep. 
just kept going backwards and got stuck and then we go forward and then got stuck and then backed up and got stuck it was just kept doing it i was like i'm out of here i can't i can't with you right fucking now lady i have to go okay we granny best of luck to you uh take care <laughs> beep, beep. baby 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 i can't drive this thing i don't know what to do here beep beep Beep. 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 <laughs> All I could hear was her just crashing into shit. I was like, I gotta go, lady. I can't I can't do this right now. <laughs> and then shortly after that, somebody else's granny came in there. And what a complete cunt. <laughs> I mean, just the worst. I was like, how can I help you? She's like, well. I guess you can. I was like, I don't have to help you. I can get somebody else for you if you need help. No, I'm looking for the enzymes. I'm like, okay, well, the enzymes over here. Well, I need the enzymes. Are you going to take me there or not? And I was like, well, we're walking this way to the enzymes if you follow me. Well, okay. And then we get over to the enzymes. And she goes, I called here looking for the best one, and somebody told me this is the most popular one. Which one is it? And I was like, man, we have a fucking 10 foot by 6 foot area of best ones, okay? It's a little bit absurd to ask that question. Which one is the best one? They're all good. What do you feel speaks to you? Well, you're not answering my question. Which one's the best one? I spoke to somebody earlier, and they said they got the best one. I'm like, Okay, ma'am. Well, these are our popular ones here. All of them. (laughs) Otherwise, we don't fucking carry it. If it doesn't sell, we don't carry it. The end. They're all popular. Just pick one. Pick a color that looks good to you and get the fuck out. (laughs) Well, you're not very helpful. I said, which one's the popular one? Maybe somebody else knows? Can I speak to somebody else? I was like, certainly. You can talk to somebody else if you can find them. She was like, oh, and I said, well, this is, and I just made up some bullshit. I was like, look, this is what the B12 doctor recommends right over here. (laughs) B12 doctor doesn't know anything about enzymes. Come on now. (laughs) She's like, that's a better answer. (laughs) I was like, well, good. How's this for a better answer? (laughs) Choke off, you fucking prick. Hold on. on. Lady. Well, are you going to take me to enzymes or not? (laughs) Oh, man. But the worst, the worst of all worsts, the hashtag the worst customer of the week by far was a lady calling to confirm that her confirmation was confirmed from the Department of Redundant Redundancy. (laughs) So I answered the phone. I was like, hello, how can I help you? She's like, hello, this is Jill. And I'm calling to confirm my appointment. I was like, okay, cool. Your appointment is confirmed. Have a nice day. 20 minutes later. How can I help you? Yeah, I just spoke to somebody. And I'm calling to confirm my appointment. And I said, yeah, I just talked to you. Your appointment is confirmed. Okay, I'm just making sure that my confirmation for my appointment is confirmed. I'm like, okay, it. It's confirmed. You're good to go. Okay. 20 minutes later again. Hello, this is Jill. I'm calling to confirm if my confirmation for my appointment is confirmed. (laughs) I was like, bitch, I just talked to you twice. It is confirmed. What? The fuck? Bitch, please. Calls again. Calls Four fucking times. Four times. This is Jill. I'm calling to confirm that the person I spoke to passed on that I called to confirm my appointment. I said, you spoke to me for the fourth time today. And yes, you are confirmed. Have a nice day. (laughs) I'm like, all right, this is it. This is, you know, this is the end. Okay. Ring, ring a fucking gun. What? The oh, fuck? Hey, Bitch, please. Where's the weed at? Yo, where's the weed at? 
Hello, this is Jill, and I'm just calling to confirm that I spoke to somebody who was supposed to confirm my confirmation for my appointment, and I just want to make sure that the message got delivered to the person who confirms the confirmations for the appointment. (laughs) I was like, okay, I've already talked to you five times today. You're confirmed. I told the lady, we have confirmed your confirmation five fucking times. It's over. Okay? You're set. You're good to go. Well, I just want to make sure that my confirmation is confirmed. And I said, yes, it is. Click. I fucking hung up on this bitch. I had a fucking enough. Yes, hold on. No, that's just asinine. Okay? We don't need that shit. We're slow as fuck, but we definitely don't need you calling five fucking times about the same goddamn thing. You are confirmed. Your confirmation has been confirmed. Fuck okay. you. <laughs> fuck you. Oh, my days. Fuck you. Some current events. Some current events. It is getting motherfucking saucy in my phone right now. Okay. I don't know. Maybe the the planets are aligned. <laughs> Mercury is in retrograde. But you, <laughs> you have got to be joking that, oh, my God, motherfucking power company. How about you go fuck yourself, shithole? Jesus Christ, just turns my power off with no warning, no notice in the fucking mail that they normally do. This time they just said, ha, turn it off. Ah, get the f- get over here. Back to my saucy phone messages. Okay, because that's what you're here for is the sauce. Okay. Uh, I don't know what's going on. Maybe certain women are in talks with each other. Maybe words getting around town. But um, not only am I getting more nudes, I'm getting ladies that want to meet up, but not officially, okay? They have not yet ready to book a date, okay? Let's book a fucking date here. What are we waiting for? What's all this booty chatter on the fucking internet? Let's just get this shit over with, all right? Do you want a date or not? Oh, my God. So my phone is getting really saucy. And, of course, I'm liking this, but I would like, you know, to to you know seal the deal i would like to see this person and and or these individuals i would like to see these individuals in person and figure out what the hell's going on so i said dear google i typed into google how to get a girl to like you and you know what the fucking googly genie said it said the server stopped responding <laughs> i got my fucking sign <laughs> After responding, which means leave it the fuck alone. None of these chicks are into you. <laughs> and I was like, thank you, Google Genie, for ruining my life. <laughs> oh, you son of a bitch. But no, I mean, there's texting going on. So there's communication, which is cool. Um, that's the first hurdle. Now, the second hurdle is to meet in person come on somebody any one of you (laughs) any one of you with a vagina okay that i like okay not the ones that have been hitting me up and are uh i don't want to be disrespectful but um they have dude jawline still um but they're wearing a dress okay um i can say this because i ain't gay so don't don't fucking come in my DMs and be like, you're a homophobe. You're a transphobe because you won't date a trans woman. <laughs> oh, my God. Oh, my God. Fucking PC police. That's just ridiculous. No, I have a preference and I need to hear the fucking macaroni sound and not a toolbox sound downstairs. <laughs> oh, my God. <laughs> that is my preference. <laughs> If I hear some fucking Makita or DeWalt or Black and Decker going on down there, I'm out. Yes, hold on. Hold on. <laughs> Fuck out of here. <laughs> oh, my God. So 
So I'm chatting with my little group chat friends, and I was shocked. I, you know, I can't even say that I'm shocked now. I was disappointed to see that one of my friends texted me back and was like, look, you're not going to get a good girlfriend slash bird slash dime piece because I don't make enough money for a dime piece. Fuck you. (laughs) Fuck you. (laughs) Fuck you. The fuck, bitch? What? The fuck, bitch, please. Saying what I think you're saying, bro. And that is, I'm not going to get a quality girl because I don't make enough money. I was like, play it. I was like, uh, what did I chat back to him? I was like, whoa, 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 player. I said, uh, have several seats. And let me pull up this fucking message here. Here it is. (laughs) I said, uh, have several seats. I said, I've got plenty of dime pieces hitting me up. Asking me to send me videos of me wanking it. So we're good, G. <laughs> Fuck you. <laughs> Fuck you. <laughs> Fuck you. Can't say that nobody's not into me because that's just not true. But they're not my type, okay? But when I have chicks that are that are my That's my type. That's my type. When I have chicks that are my type asking me to send them naughty videos, bruh, we, we good, G. I'm square. Somebody likes me, all right? We cool. But I was just shocked. I'm like, bruh, I call you a friend, and you fucking say that? And then I went, oh, shit. Oh, shit. I realized that my so-called friend chatting shit in the text message is richer than me, but has been in a drought just as long as me. <laughs> so I was like, uh, fam, how do you figure that you're richer than me, but you got zero dime pieces? <laughs> I said, hashtag zero dimes. <laughs> Fuck you! <laughs> Fuck you! <laughs> Fuck you! We're supposed to be homies. I get, you know, we're going to have little jabs here and there. But that was just downright out of pocket. Like, brother man knows that I've been fucking trying, okay, for the last um, billion years, okay, because that's how long it's been. I've been trying to find a legit lady, okay? A uh, a woman in the streets and a freak in the sheets, if you will. <laughs> and this motherfucker goes on and tries to say, because I don't make enough money that I'm not going to have a quality girlfriend. What? <laughs> Jog off, you fucking prick. Yeah, well, if, if my life is anything like yours, which Mr. Baller, man, you are, you are ten times richer than me. And he still has a zero, zero, nil, nil scorecard, okay? This motherfucker has had nada, okay? Just as long as me, okay? We're in the same fucking trench. And this bitch is trying to throw his dirt into my side, okay? And I'm like, bruh, catch this dirt, okay? Fuck, I'm the greatest, I know, yeah. You, you're you goofy, fucking dummy. You jackass. You fucking momo. You fucking momo. What the hell kind of friend is that? I was like, oh, okay, girl. Well, you know what? Whoever put your wig on too tight, this is this is the end. <laughs> I was just like, cool. I made the right decision telling some other homies. I gave them the tea, the real tea about what's going on. 
with some of these ladies and it, it, it proved my point correctly. I, I, I let the right friends know and about the, the real details and this other friend is not going to get the details. You, you're not going to get the T fam. Um, but I will tell you when it is over, you will be the last one standing with a nil nil score sheet and I will have hit that goal. Goal. <laughs> you mark my fucking words, okay? Listen, I am 233 pounds pretty fucking soon. A lot of goddamn ladies are going to find me irresistible with zero dollars to my name, bitch. <laughs> Fuck you! <laughs> Fuck you! <laughs> Fuck you! I'm not rich, but damn it. I'm doing well than some other people, okay? You know, I could be fucking living in a tent somewhere, trying to fucking survive, robbing and stealing, trying to fight for my life, maybe, maybe not, potentially on drugs, trying not to get raped somewhere. I could be living on the streets, but I ain't. I have a a house. I have food in my fucking fridge that's melting because I have no power. (laughs) Uh, I have a, a car. Uh, I have a bed and I have two dogs and I've got some great friends. Maybe not this one. (laughs) Oh my God. But in a job that fucking seems pretty fucking rich to me. Now, granted, I ain't going to fucking blow back somebody's hair and buy a fucking 911 turbo Porsche. Okay. I'm not that rich. Okay. Yeah. I'm living check to check. Yeah. Yeah. That's my choice, though. You understand? Yeah, that's my choice. Because most of the money I spend, I, I throw it in stonks because I know that that's good for my future. So in the end, when this all comes down to the end, then I will be well enough where I won't need to work, motherfucker. Okay, how about that? Yes, I need to work now. No, I am not rich. Yes, I'm living check to check. But I won't be living check to check for long. And I would hope that my friend, my so-called friend, would be supportive in that and 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 shout me out, at least in the chat. If forget social media, but just tell me like, hey, you know, you're working hard. I appreciate you. Or, hey, you're doing a good job. Um, Much love. You know, instead, it's just like, oh, you're not doing this right. You'll never get any fucking birds. You're not good enough for this. Whoop the fucking whoop. I'm like, bitch, you ain't a fucking friend. You a hater. A straight up hater. So go on. Keep sipping that motherfucking haterade that you do. And uh, I will, you know, keep my real friends informed of the details of my life that are important. And then, of course, you guys. Because, you know, you guys are you guys are my rock, okay? <laughs> Pierna. <laughs> You guys are my rock, okay? But this other friend, I'm like, damn. Fuck you! (laughs) Fuck you! (laughs) Fuck you! My gosh. And speaking of haters, just in case any haters are actually listening, once again, I am 233 pounds, and in less than three weeks, I'm about to enter a jujitsu tournament where I could potentially make as much as I would make in a day for a couple hours of my time. <laughs> so, uh, hopefully, I start doing well in these and then, you know, work a little bit less, do a little bit more jujitsu, And before I know it, boom, Bob's your uncle. I don't have to work no more. That would be lovely as well. Um, also... I'm trying to secure my spot in a in a women's self defense training classes, so I got to come up with the funds for that. But uh, I'm hoping to get certified in that, so I can start teaching ladies how to defend themselves for some of these jackasses like my fucking friend. <laughs> We want to make sure this motherfucker doesn't in the streak. Oh my god. 
<laughs> ah, I'm going to teach these ladies to kick this guy right in the nuts. <laughs> Fuck you. <laughs> Fuck you. <laughs> Fuck you. Some lines that you don't cross, fam. And that is one of them. It's like, come on. It's a shitty thing to say. You're fucking out of pocket for that. I mean, on the real. And of course, you know, he doesn't listen to this. So maybe somebody would tell him. Who knows? Uh, The point is, your real friends obviously tell you the truth. That was not truthful. That was just straight up hateful. Um, Your real friends tell you the truth, but they also love and support you. Okay, that is what friends are fucking for. That's what friends are for. In good times and bad times, I'll be on your side forevermore. That's what friends are for. You're welcome. (laughs) Okay, so (laughs) some other current events going on right now. This Hola mami Giancarlo Mucho gusto This hola mami Tina Gonzalez (laughs) Working in the Fresno prison system 27 years old Arrested for having sex with inmates By cutting a sex hole In her pants (laughs) Mujer en onda Mujer en onda Mujer en onda Mujer en me encantan las mujeres Y en la mañana las mujeres Y por la noche las mujeres This bitch cut a sex hole in her pants And had sex with inmates What the fuck? She is now going to be doing seven months jail With two years probation I mean really Where is this hola mami Tina Gonzalez? When I needed her. <laughs> oh my God. Where are the ladies at who are cutting the hole in the pantalones? <laughs> I need you to hit the DM right now. Gen T523, you're welcome. <laughs> ay, ay, ay. Me the wow. Holy shit. <laughs> How the fuck do you do that? This bitch. They said she had sex with like 11 dudes or something. Man. <laughs> That's my point. That's my type. That's my type. Listen, if you're cutting sex holes in your pants, you better call me. <laughs> Holy shit. That is wild. <laughs> Oh, man. Oh, oh, oh. This is a story from my mans here. Man suffers a snake bite to his balls after a python escaped from his neighbor's house. Mm. Holy shit. Snake escaped from his neighbor's house through a drain and came out through the other neighbor's toilet. And when the neighbor sat down, he instantly felt a pain in his balls, in his hrum. And he jumped up and turned around and saw a python looking back at him. Mm. <laughs> Holy shit. A, a fucking snake bit his hram. Oh, <laughs> that is the worst fucking nightmare. Can you imagine? Can you imagine? You wake up in the morning. This is why I always turn the light on in the bathroom. See, I used to go to the bathroom in the dark. I don't do that no more. I mean, I'm podcasting in the dark right now, but I turn the lights on, okay? I am deathly afraid of something biting my <laughs> uh, from the turlet. You know, something that escaped from the neighbor. <laughs> this man was like, oh, man, I got to get up and take a piss, mate. I'll be right back. Oh, he's going to go hit the head. And you go to sit down and... Holy Jesus, gold, something bit me balls. <laughs> mm. <laughs> 
Holy shit. Why did the fucking neighbor say, hey, bruh, my snake escaped. Be on the lookout. <laughs> what the hell? How are you going to do that to your neighbor and let him just bite his balls like that? <laughs> mm. <laughs> All right, so this sound clip is coming from the Every Night Nights podcast with Snow the Product and her girlfriend, Juju, and her brother, Ito. So this one, they were playing a people's court where a man took another man to court over a slice of pizza and won a $3 judgment. Let's take a look. Indicated that both thin and thick slices of pizza were available. The defendant states that the plaintiff caused such a commotion during the incident, including summoning the police, that her restaurant actually lost business. So let's watch now as Judge Wapner hears the testimony in this spicy dispute. <laughs> I know you've been sworn, sir. I have read your complaint. Uh, you're asking for a refund of some money you paid for a Three dollars for a slice of fucking pizza. pizza. Yes, right. What did you order? I ordered a thick chicken pizza slice. Okay. What did you get? <clears throat> what was handed to me was a thin pizza chicken slice, which I which I did not take. Did not take? Which I didn't. No, I I refused to take it. Receive it, in other words. Had, had you already paid for it in advance? I paid for a thick chicken pizza slice. I understand, but you paid. Cookie. You paid in advance yes, before you got it. Yes. All right. <laughs> was there a menu there that indicated they had? The menu was on the marquee board, which is located just right outside of the establishment on the boardwalk. Holy shit. Just being three dollars for a thick pizza. You went to court three dollars over three dollar slice of pizza. I paid a total of three dollars and seventy three cents. Three seventy three there was no price on the cookie, so I presume that the cookie was around seventy three cents as the total was three seventy three. But you're suing for two forty eight. Well, that was subtracting a dollar twenty five of the cookie which I did accept. Who'd you order from? Any of these people that are here? From the cashier, the young man that's next to the owner. Okay. You were there? Oh, it's yeah, a I child. Was. Did he order a thick slice of pizza? Yeah, but we told him we Wait did a not. Minute. He did? Yes, he did. Okay. And what did you tell him? We told him that we do not have... No, we. I wasn't talking about I you. I told him yeah. that there's no thick pizza today. And he agreed and he ordered a thin piece. Oh, shit. Why you in you trouble, my guy. asking for his money back then? When he got the thin pizza, did he ask for his money back? Yeah. What did you tell him then? I handed him over to my mother because I can't do anything about it. Oh, shit. Did you then have a discussion with the plaintiff then? Yes, Your Honor. I came over and I talked to him and said, what seems to be the problem here? And he told me that he had ordered a thick slice. And I said, well, we don't have thick crust today. And uh, my son had already told him in advance. There's no well, you, you, Did you hear your son say that? Uh, my son has told all the customers. No, ma'am. Yes. Ma'am, I asked you specifically. Did Judge you Wapner. Your son, when he had this conversation with the plaintiff. For this particular slice? Yes. No, I didn't hear this particular conversation. Well, what's the cost of a, a thick uh, The slice? thick and the thin slices, Your Honor, are the same price. Same $3. price? Yes. Therefore, we served him the very finest quality pizza, which I brought with me today as an example. To show oh, my God. Pizza. She brought the moldy-ass like pizza. A piece of the pizza. Well, you can show if me. I, I don't mean. think it makes much difference. Uh, there is a difference between thick and thin slices, isn't there? Very little difference in the crust. But we served him a beautiful slice of pizza, which he immediately refused. <laughs> and immediately said, I'm going to take you to court and sue you because I work for a law firm. It won't cost me anything. And oh I my days, shocked. bruh! It costs you more than three dollars to drive to the courthouse. <laughs> Your fucking gas money, you jackass! When this man ordered his pizza, that chicken was cut specifically for him, for that one slice. It was made, it was given to him, and it was fresh and it was beautiful. And he didn't even—I mean, he just immediately started in about, "I'm going to take you to court." And I want my money, and I said, well, I'm sorry. I would be happy to give anyone their money back if I would ever serve something that wasn't, you know, suitable or high quality. If you could find something wrong, I'd be happy to. But it's like when you go and order a custom-made suit, and the person has their time and labor and materials into it. 
What did you do with the pizza? Well, it's not the same as the custom made Well, you know what I mean. Did anyone, else eat, this pizza? Did anyone else eat the pizza? pizza no, we, 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 what, he, he, went, he summoned to the police and he went he called the police. <laughs> Promotion. Yo, upset with customers. They were complaining <laughs> this guy is wild. My time, the register we was taking up, you know, the cashier's time. He kept going back and forth. He wanted to be easier than to just give us two dollars and 48 cents. Well, it's the principle of the well, thing. I appreciate that. that. You know, we have a business to run and we have certain operating costs. And we put out, you know, we took this boneless chicken breast and cut it up for him because that's what he ordered. He did order a thick slice of pizza, correct? Yes. And, and you say you told him. You didn't have six slices that day. Yes. That's, excuse me, Your Honor, that's untrue. In fact, what oh, he said, no. <laughs> after I explained to him that I wanted a thick order of chicken slice pizza and the cookie, he went back, he gave me the cookie, paid for the, I paid for the amount of the uh, two per items, and then he went and made a, made a request for the order, which I didn't hear what exactly what he had said, but at no time did he tell me at the window that he had no thick slices. Anyone else with that. you at the at the window? Um, another person, but they're not here today because they have chicken pox. <laughs> <laughs> Your fucking witness has chicken pox. <laughs> you make both thick and thin slices of pizza at the restaurant? We we used to make thick, but we haven't made thick for a while because um. Holy menu, shit, this board? is yeah. wild. Was it on the board outside? Yeah, because the day he came there, we were still making it, but that day it wasn't made. And we didn't have the thick yet. But it was still on the board. Right, but he wasn't... The reason that he must have been informed is because when everyone comes up to the window, if they order that, we have to tell them that there is no thick because obviously there's no thick to order. So, you know, the only when thing... When was the last time before that day that you made thick? Um, probably like a week. Before that, yeah. Sir, you have something you want to tell me? Um, Uh oh, here comes Jersey Pete here. Toppings on there, you know. I do the toppings. (laughs) Okay, you put the toppings on both thick and thin. Oh yes. You remember the last time you made thick pizza before Uh, that day? No, I I just started there about uh, a couple weeks before then, and uh, they didn't have it there. Okay. <laughs> this case. Oh, he took a recess. <laughs> He's gonna fucking think about it. <laughs> Holy shit! All of them, get the fuck out of my court. Testimony: paid three dollars for the pizza. The rest was for a cookie, which he did accept, which he did eat. The plaintiff ordered a, what he considered to be a. He wanted a thick slice of this chicken pizza. It was also on the board on the menu outside. Either the order taker didn't tell the plaintiff uh, about the fact that they weren't making a thick slice of pizza or the plaintiff didn't hear him say it. Because I can't imagine when the plaintiff gets this thin slice of pizza, if he in fact was told and heard it that there wasn't any thick pizza that day, why he wouldn't accept it. It wouldn't make any sense. He doesn't gain anything. All he wanted was his money back. He, he, he's not asking for uh, a lawsuit to uh, punish the defendant in any way or to get any more than what he considered to be the cost of the pizza. Yeah, he, he doesn't is. Doesn't make any sense. So Fucking doesn't make any sense that they're there. And he didn't get what he paid for, and therefore he's entitled to judgment for three dollars. <laughs> This motherfucker got three dollars well, after he fucking wasted. <laughs> he fucking wasted hours of his time filing paperwork, driving down to the courthouse. These fucking other people had to get witnesses. One of them had goddamn chicken pox. <laughs> Holy shit! White people Wednesday. <laughs> God damn, man, that was wild. <laughs> All right. The moment some of you degenerate gamblers have been waiting for. My motherfucking UFC picks. And we're going to wrap this show the fuck up because I'm tired of sitting here in the dark, goddammit. I'm just going to go to bed. Fuck this. (laughs) All right. First up, Yao Zonghu versus Alan Amduski. I'm taking Alan Amduski. Next. Zalgas Zumanagolov from Kazakhstan. Number one, my wife 
versus Jerome Rivera. I'm taking Zalgas for the win. Next, Omari Akhmedov versus Brad Tavares. I'm taking Mother Russia, Omari Akhmedov. Next, Jennifer Maya versus Jessica I. I'm taking Jennifer Maya, Brazil. Next, Trevin Giles versus Drisus Duplicis. I'm taking Drisus Duplicis from South Africa, I. Eh? Next, a jiu-jitsu god Ryan Hall versus Ilya Tupura. Normally, I would take Ilya Tupura, but it is Ryan Hall, the best jiu-jitsu player in the UFC, hands down. Ryan Hall for the win. Next, my homie's main man, my man Duba, his friend Nico Price versus Michael Piera, and I'm taking Nico Price. Next, Carlos Condit versus Max Griffon. I'm taking Carlos Condit. Next, Sugar Shane O'Malley versus Chris Martino. You know, uh, hey UFC, how about you give Sugar O'Malley, Sugar San, Sugar San O'Malley a legit opponent now? Enough with these fucking cans, all right? Kids 13 and 1. It's time you fought some real talent. You got to test the talent, okay? I'm taking Sean Oshuga or Mali. Next, Irene Aldana versus Yana Kunitskaya. I cannot tell you how much I dislike Kunitskaya. <laughs> she has the worst striking I've ever fucking seen. And yet is still employed by the UFC. I cannot, for the life of me, figure it the fuck out. And she keeps winning, which is even more shocking. I don't know what's going on, but she is absolutely garbage. Terrible. I mean this with peace and love, but goddamn, if it was anyone else across the ring, I would still pick them over Yana Kunitskaya. And guess what? Yana will probably win. Because the word around the block is Irene Aldana did not make fucking weight. Shit. Fuck. So I'm taking Irene Aldana, but Yana Kunitskaya should win. <laughs> Next. No, 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 me, my man. Tai Tuivasa. From a down and that Sydney mate versus that piece of shit woman beater Greg Hardy. Uh, Arriva Thirchi, cocksucker. This should be the nail in your coffin as you have lost three in a row, right? Come on, Ty, finish this motherfucker off and let's do a shoey together. Next, Gilbert Burns versus Stephen Wonderboy Thompson. I'm taking Gilbert Burns as a uh, desperate plea, but uh, Stephen Thompson has the best point karate I've ever fucking seen in my life. So uh, if I were you, I would not bet on that fight, but I'm just going to take Gilbert Burns for the win because I love Gilbert. I love his personality, his tenacity, and not that I don't love uh, Stephen Thompson, but uh, I just I just love Gilbert. He's just ferocious. And, you know, when you do the point karate... Sometimes you don't finish fights. Matter of fact, most of Wonder Boy's fights he doesn't finish because it's just about just kicking and moving, kicking and moving, and, and punching and moving. And it's, it's, it's exciting. It's all right to see, but it's just like, come on, bruh, finish somebody, please. Come on. We want to go home. <laughs> and finally, main eventus, Dustin the Diamond Prie, Bassis, Carter Murgarega. Uh, you know this fight? I'm sick of this fight already. I've about had a fuck enough of this. I'm ready to eat my pineapple in the dark and go to sleep. Uh, but before I do that, I just want to say that in my expert opinion, which is not very experty at all, I feel like the room for improvement lies on Connor's side, which would give him the advantage, okay? Dustin did everything right. I really feel that there was not really much to improve on. So I feel like if you won the last fight, you did so well, it's going to be hard for you to really strategize what to do the next time you fight the same guy. Whereas mathematically, it is impossible for the same Connor to show up and fight Dustin. Okay. He's going to capitalize on the mistakes that Connor made and the mistakes that Dustin might have made during that fight because Connor is going to do that. 
Now, will it be enough to win? That I don't know. But as a former Connor fan and as a Dustin fan, I will simply just take Conor McGregor for the sake of his fucking legacy. I mean, this kid needs a win. Somebody pointed out in the audience last night during the presser that Conor has not won a fight since Barack Obama was in office. (laughs) So uh, (laughs) maybe, you know, for the sake of his legacy, he should get a win here. I'm just saying. But uh, if Dustin wins, more power to him. I don't care either way. I'm so over this fucking fight. I just wish Conor was gone retire uh maybe retire on a win because it's not looking good fam you just you're just looking sorry um i've heard bits and pieces from people i really don't like to watch the press conferences anymore because i just want to see them fight i don't care about the shit talking it's garbage and none of that means anything until that cage door locks and the ref says go okay it's all garbage okay so as Uncle Dana says, shut up and fight. <laughs> I don't give a fuck. So I'm riding with Connor on this, but it means nothing to me if Dustin wins either. I could care either way. I just want it to be competitive. Don't get smashed again, Connor. I mean, that's ridiculous. Come on. You got three kids. You got a legacy. I love that Rolex that you have where it has the dude fucking the lady as the knob turns. I mean, what the heck? <laughs> $50,000 watch. Come on, buddy. <laughs> Don't you want to buy more of those? Well, you got to win, okay? You need to win this fight if you want to buy more of these watches with people banging inside the faces there. <laughs> or two, two pulling up to the UFC and two Rolls Royces because you can't even drive. You can only drive one car at a time, my guy. Why do you need two? Why do you need two delivered to the fucking arena? You only can drive one. <laughs> I mean, the money this guy has is just mentally insane. I mean, it's just not well. (laughs) Um, But if he wants to share, Connor, Connor, (laughs) help a sister out. (laughs) I appreciate you. And that is going to do it for me. I've had a fucking enough in the darkness. Uh, You know, it's been real. It's been fun. Uh, Not really. uh, But I hope you have enjoyed this lovely show. I did the best I fucking could. Maybe that's kind of a lie. Uh, Maybe next time I will have uh, power. (laughs) Please like, share, and subscribe to Rambo Radio, RamboRadio.com. Leave me a lovely review. Put some stars on the Apple or the, the Spotify. I don't know. I sent my information to spotify i don't think they got it i don't think they care <laughs> but i'll keep trying for y'all who keep asking i'll say, you know what are we gonna go to spotify when are you gonna make the next step i'm i'm working on it fam i'm working on it okay i want this show to go to the next level and and what that means i saw in the fine print was no music and god damn it i love my music i can't do copyright stuff fuck fucking spotify come on man why don't you sponsor this podcast spotify and then i can use the music eh <laughs> oh, wishful thinking but anyhow i'm so grateful for every single one of you that listen that give me the opportunity to act like a fool for an hour once a week maybe this show wasn't an hour but you get the point uh i appreciate everyone's kind messages anybody who comes up to me and tells me they love the show and the things they like or the things that they hate all of it is uh constructive criticism and i take it and and i and i go forth and i really feel like i'm trying my hardest to make these shows awesome for you until next time friends it has been fun i hope you have a wonderful week enjoy the fights and i will talk to you next week inshallah god willing and i'm out much love and many blessings peace fuck you oh fuck you 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 fuck you